And Natasha Duncan is the eldest sister of the dearly missed Chantel Davis. At the age of 23, Chantel was killed by NYPD Detective Philip Atkins in June 2012. Chantel's ultimately an unjust death spurred Natasha to become a dedicated and fierce police accountability activist. Natasha is the founder of Hoops for Justice, an annual basketball tournament for youth dedicated to Chantel and Kamani Gray. Natasha is a leader in the Justice Committee and part of the, so, the Justice State of Mind planning team. So beautiful to see so many people out here tonight. The first thing I want to say is that, and I want to take this out of here, is that activism is not done to acquire awards. So most of us who do this work are compelled by a vision of our liberation. And yet we have many, of, many people here tonight amongst us that deserve every accolade, every bit of praise, every bit of admiration that we have. And we are honoring four of them tonight, and now we have two more to go. We have Ju Hyung Kang and Lumuma Bandele. <laughs> Ju Han is the director of Communities United for Police Reform. <laughs> and, and its sister organization, CPR Action Fund, she was the first executive, executive director of the Audrey Lord Project. And she has decades of movement experience as an organizer, a trainer, and a strategist. And Lumumba is the director of community organizing at the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund. He, he is a board member of the Center for Constitutional Rights and a member of JC's longtime ally, Malcolm X Grassroots Movement. Lumumba was literally born into the movement and has decades of experience building grassroots advocacy and cultural organizations that center black leadership. And this dates back to at least the 80s, maybe even the 70s, right, Lumumba? Yes. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, you know, I'm glad that we're able to get everyone together tonight to honor these two, because I truly believe that it's best to honor people that you admire when they're here and not when they're six feet under. Um, like was stated before, I know many of you know, I was, thrown, I was thrown into this movement by the untimely death of my sister eight years ago. And um, I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know who to trust. Um, I've encountered so many organizations, so many people that just wanted to be in the spotlight. They wanted to just follow the, the hot new case. So many people promised to be there and when the cameras left, they left. I don't, I don't think I could put into words what it, what it really means to, to have people that you know you could count on. Even, even when you don't call, you just know that they're gonna be there with a blink of an eye. So I can't, I can't say thank you enough to you, Lumumba and Juhan for all that you do, for being on the front line when people don't want to be. I, I said I wasn't going to cry. I don't know. <sighs> I, thank you. Thank you. So I want to say just a few words about both Ju Hyun and Lumumba. Uh, I've known Ju Hyun since I joined the JC in 1998. And back in those days, we were so full of energy and fire. Um, and through some really very rough years, post 9-11, uh, those were very rough years for this movement. Ju Hyun has, you know, continued to be committed and stay consistent in this fight. 
And she really continues to bring the spirit of upping the ante, which is something that Richie implored of us uh, in his last days. And honestly, I feel comforted when Juhyun is in the room. <laughs> I know we're going to be pushing for the fiercest outcome and using the best strategy that you know to get there. Juhyun is brilliant, tireless, principled, a true light for all of us. And I feel honored to know her and to learn from her and to be inspired by her leadership. Juhyun, you are beyond deserving of this honor but more so of our gratitude every day for everything that you give to the struggle and to this movement. So thank you. Namumba, you're next, you're next. <laughs> Namumba, I've also known for over 20 years and met him through Richie as well. The first action that I attended with Lumumba, and I know you've heard the story, but I'm gonna tell it again. Uh, Lumumba walked me and my friend to the subway station to make sure that we were safe and secure. We were at some panel with some big police big wigs and we disrupted it and we were loud and they kicked us out. Um, and you know, yes, it was a practical move for him to do that, but it also spoke volumes about the, the man that Lumumba is, the integrity that he has. <laughs> Um, I didn't know that much at that time. That was my, one of my first introductions. But I came to learn more about the man that Lumumba is. Uh, when we, especially when our children were very young, we spent time with four other families, one of which is in the room, uh, developing a childcare cooperative called Little Maroons. And uh, so our, our children have grown up together. Uh, Lumumba has become my family, my beloved brother, uh, and Baba to my son. I trust him with my life. Uh, I trust him with my son's life, more importantly. Lumumba, thank you for being a shining example of fatherhood, activism, and nation builder. I love you. Let's give it up for Lumumba and Juhan! Just in just giving them this honor, we had to gather like 10 or 15 people for them to accept this, these awards tonight. It wasn't even, it wasn't easy to get them here, trust me. So that's true, real talk. I wasn't returning your son's call. I wasn't returning somebody. I was like, no, there's eight million people that could be awarded. And it wasn't until she actually said, could you do this for me? I was like, all right, I can't say no. I don't, I don't say no. So this is great. Um, so peace, family. And I call y'all family because this is family. Um, I want to first of all thank my blood family for being here. One of the... One of the people I've known my entire life, my oldest sister, Maia, is here. Um, my youngest daughter, Adasa. And my rock, my partner in life and crime and happiness, Monifa. Um, but then I also have my LDF family, Zenzele is here. Um, and my Malcolm X grassroots movement family is here. And then we have the larger movement family. So I appreciate all of you. Um, really quickly, I just want to say that one of the things that makes what we do so important is because the more things change, the more they stay the same. The day we planned, the day we executed, rather, the day um, the verdict announcement, non-verdict, uh, excuse me, non-indictment uh, announcement of the Eric Garner case, was the day we welcomed home, after 33 and a half years in prison, freedom fighter Sekou Odinga. So, we have been working on Sekou's case for decades, and so he comes home, and for those of you who don't know who Sekou Odinga is, he went to prison being convicted for being a part of the liberation of Asada Shakur. 
he was also very prominent in the work against police brutality as a member of the Black Panther Party. So he literally came out of prison to the same conditions that he went into. And so it really is a way for us to underscore how much work we have to do, but also to know that we have both the ability and most importantly, the responsibility to make this happen. And so thank you all for all of your work and I'll see y'all on the front lines tomorrow. Congratulations, Lumumba. Uh, thank you, Justice Committee. I want to just start by saying thank you to the members of Justice Committee, the longtime members, the newer members, the board members, the staff. Justice Committee has been around, as you all know, for a very long time. And when one of the first times I've known, I guess we've known Justice Committee for almost or around a quarter of a century. Um, when we were one years old, we met Justice Committee. So we've known uh, Justice Committee for a long time, and one of the, when it was actually the National Congress for Puerto Rican Rights is how I remember it in the 90s. And in the 90s, we used to refer to the Justice Committee as the Congress. And one of the first actions that I participated in with the Congress was a citywide shutdown of bridges and tunnels, uh, responding to Rudolph Giuliani's really fucked up budget cuts across the city. Um, and Richie Perez actually was the brainchild behind, or the brains and the strategy behind that, and we kind of think about him all the time in our work at Communities Night for Police Reform. But the other story I want to tell about the, Justice, uh, about the Congress in the 90s, which is now the Justice Committee, is actually one of the cases um, I worked on with the Justice Committee when I was at the Audre Lorde Project, which is a queer and trans people of color organization. And that was a case of a black Latinx uh, trans woman who was beaten up in her home um, after her mother called uh, 911 because uh, she was worried about her. She was beaten up, her mother was beaten up, a neighbor was beaten up, the dog was, was uh, beaten up. And um, actually, around that time, there was a homophobic, a racist, and classist incident. But what really struck me and what I really remember and I'm so thankful for is that the gay organizations at that time, and I'm calling them gay uh, specifically because they really only represented gay men, the gay organizations at that time actually pulled out of that case because we didn't want to talk about only transphobia or homophobia. We wanted to talk about the racism and the policing of public housing. The Justice Committee and Richie and Megan Ortiz, who was the co-coordinator at the time, were the ones who really worked with us to make sure the charges got dropped against this family, that this family was able to fight for justice. So thank you to the Justice Committee in the 90s, and if we move past forward to now, uh, the JC is actually not only one of the founding members of Communities Night for Police Reform, but is still part of our core leadership. And one of the reasons when I first um, started with CPR's staff, one of the things I said actually to Lumumba and to Lloyda probably at the time was that I'm not actually going to do this position unless you commit to me that your organizations, the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement and the Justice Committee are part of this leadership. Because that's what we're going to need to ground us in terms of the actual work we need to do and the level of multi-decade commitment and vision we need to carry out. So thank you Justice Committee for your leadership always. I'm so honored to be uh, honored, but more honored to be honored with the people who are all in this room. Thank you so much. known and always heard freedom is not free in a capitalist society so we are about to pitch so first and foremost all of those watching us on live stream please go to the justice committee website but I did want to say and we are ahead of schedule first and foremost which never happens which means that we're gonna get to dance and fellowship a little bit more but I texted Vicente Panama Alba, who lives in Puerto Rico. And I was like, Panama, we're here, we're about to celebrate. 
what do you want to say? And he said, I'm an old man. The world is in the youth's hand. Pass it on and do the work. <laughs> That's Obama. <laughs> so I want to introduce who is going to help us fundraise. And um, even if you're here tonight, whatever you can give is so important, right? Like, I think the amazing thing about a lot of the organizations that are here tonight is we don't go to huge foundations to ask for money. Usually they're gonna give it to us anyway because they have to. But we know that most of the work is because of everyone in this room and everyone else outside who really believes in the work. And when you have integrity and you are principled even in the hardest of times, the people will reward that. And we need to keep this going on. Unfortunately, we know there will be more victims of police brutality and that will be many more families we need to support in whatever they feel is justice for their loved one. So I want to introduce Candace Tolliver, <laughs> who has been fighting for workers and women's rights, racial and social justice for over a decade. She is currently the political director of 32BJ, SEIU. Yes, I support all the unions. Let's support Chicago right now, the teachers on strike, right? Yeah. And while at 32BJ, Candace has been an instrumental leader of the historic push that brought a $15 minimum wage to New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. She also led successful advocacy campaigns in support of voter rights expansions, fair scheduling for f fast food workers, a cap on four hire vehicles, the Farm Worker Bill of Rights, driver's licenses for undocumented New Yorkers, paid family leave, and many other fights to improve the lives of working families in the Empire State. Candace started her career at Planned Parenthood. She spent five years at the New York Civil Liberties Union, working on racial justice and police reform efforts. During that time, she worked closely with the Justice Committee while representing the NYCLU and Communities United for Police Reform. She's the honorary chairperson of CPR's Party All the Time Working Group. And she also lives for karaoke, which we might have to do that tonight, Candace. So, welcome up, Candace. Thank you, sis. Listen, if y'all wanna do karaoke, just turn on my song. Um, um, so thank you so much uh, for being here tonight. I'm so excited to be here. I've been like smiling from ear to ear since the minute I walked in the room. And it's because when I'm at the Justice Committee events, I know I'm with family. And when I'm with my folks at CPR, I'm so glad to see you all, I know I'm with family. So I'm definitely gonna ask you to dig deep, deep, deep down in your pockets. But before I do, I want to tell a little bit of st a little story about my time working with the Justice Committee. And so when I was at the New York Civil Liberties Union, because we were the New York Civil Liberties Union, we didn't always get invited into spaces. And I remember, <laughs> don't laugh, I'm serious. <laughs> um, and I remember a meeting that was happening about an action. And I was working with Communities United for Police Reform for a while. And I had been a part of plenty of actions, and they were like, maybe we can invite you to the planning of this action. And I get to the room, to the place, the meeting place, which was very, you know, I didn't know where I was going until maybe an hour before I got there. I was like, what's, what's happening here? Um, and I get in the room, and the first thing Lloyd says to me when I walk in the room is, take the battery out of your cell phone. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? What are we doing here? And I was like, oh, y'all planning an action action. Oh, I got it. Oh, we doing some real shit. Okay. I'm here for it. And I remember that was right before we shut down the bridge 
the Manhattan Bridge around uh, an incident where the police got away with some shit again. And uh, I didn't get arrested that night because I don't think my clue was ready for that. Uh, but I remember grabbing the materials and the coats and the bags of people who were getting arrested. And Kathy Dang is over there. She almost, she almost got me taken away. The police said, you grab one more thing, you go in two. I was like, all right. <laughs> I'm out. That's good. I got it. Uh, but it was, it was in that moment that I realized that what we do is important. There are not many organizations like the Justice Committee that's organizing families of people who were killed by the NYPD and other police officers and really building power in our networks and taking on these institutions of power in a real way and winning, right? We're winning. And we're winning because everyone knows that the work that we're doing is important, but it's because we're strategic. And the work that Justice Committee to, does to organize these communities and organize folks and get everyone on the same page so that when we go up against power, we're united, we win. And I'm so excited about the work. And so now I'm going to ask you all who have been in this room, who have ate, you ate some good food, right? Did you eat? You, had, you maybe had a couple of drinks, good also. Um, so now we're going to ask you to, to show your love and respect for the Justice Committee. Who's here because they love and respect the Justice Committee? All right. So now show us. So on my way here, I was a little bit late because I was meeting with our new president of our union, and I told him where I was going, and he said, do we support them? And I was like, not yet, but we should. And he was like, all right, let's do some, let's do some checks. So listen, I'm going to do $500 here today. Who else is going to do $500 with me? Is there somebody who will do a $500 donation to Justice Committee today? Oh, we got one. Are there any others? All right, what about, okay, what about $300? I have one. What'd you say over there? A thousand? I will ask for a thousand. Who will give me a thousand dollars? Who will give me a thousand dollars? I'm in. Let's ask for it. Closed mouths don't get fed. <laughs> we got somebody doing 300, though. Who will do, who else would do 300? Do we have another person? Oh, we have someone in the back there. We have another one up front that'll get $300. Okay, who will give me $200 tonight? Oh, I have two over here. We have two folks over here that'll give us $200. Will anyone give me $100? Oh, we have one here. Oh, we have, we have a couple up front. We have one here, one here, one up front that'll give us $100. Listen, thank you so much for your donations. There are a couple ways to donate today. If you're here and you're saying, I only have a credit card, or I only have my debit card, I can't give you know, cash today or a check today, there are folks here in the room that will, be, will allow you to use um, a credit card. So if you wanna give donations that way, just raise your hand and we'll come over to you with the uh, technology that will allow you to swipe it. Just swipe it. <laughs> and if you wanna give online, you can Venmo at Justice Committee to give online. I know a lot of you have Venmo. But I just want to thank you so much for giving. Don't forget to give. There's people walking through the room. It's never too late. There's no amount that's too small. And so thank you so much. And have, enjoy the rest of the night.
right, so this concludes this part of the program tonight. Just give me a quick second so we go through the rest of the night. Quick second. Quick, 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 quick. Thank you. So, um, one more time, I'm just going to tell, because we're live streaming the event, so thank you again to Laura Flanders and her crew for being here. And this is a very personal thing, and I'm just going to have to say it, but I see Sally O'Brien in the audience. Stand up, Sally. Who is the only reason I even got into journalism. And of course, we know the work that Sally and Where We Live has done for over 30 years to chronicle the stories of our freedom fighters. So with that said, we're gonna dance. In a little while, anybody who really brought the hip hop, I did. My daughter made me wear this. And I, I can't even be in the contest. But for those, we're gonna have a contest for best hip hop, right? And we want everybody to enjoy themselves tonight and fellowship. And thank you all so much for being with us.